Hi, my name is Morgan Rauscher, and I sculpted this artwork out of recycled bicycle components and used a chainsaw so that you could sculpt things out of wood using video game controllers. I'm going to take you through a short video series of how I made this, and uh, hope you enjoy. In this video, I'm going to take you through how I produce these arcade game controls that are used to control the robot. One of the research groups I belong to is the Technoculture Art and Games Lab. In the lab, I began my prototype using an Arduino Mega. I use the Arduino Mega because it has many inputs and outputs, but this also can make it difficult to access. In order to deal with this problem, the first thing that I did was build out the Arduino Mega Proto Shield. It fits right on top of the Arduino Mega, as you can see here, but it also makes it easier to access all of the input. Next up, I plug in the Arduino to my computer via the USB port and confirm that it's working. I used a PS2 scroll wheel kit and arcade game buttons that you can see here. PS2 is a standard that was used in older computer controls, like the mouse and keyboard. I stripped clean the ends of the PS2 connection. I also stripped each individual connection at the end of the PS2 cable. Now I needed to determine which wire was which at the end of the PS2 plug, or the header pin connections. To do this, I simply used a continuity test and a multimeter, both things you can find out how to use on the internet. Once I knew which wire was which, I soldered all of them to the Arduino Proto Shield, and I connected another set of wires on the other side that could be used to plug into different ports. After plugging the Arduino Mega Proto Shield back onto the Arduino and tidying up my wires just a little bit, I was ready to plug the Arduino back into the computer and run my first tests. First I wanted to get this PS2 scroll wheel to indicate changes when I moved it. In order to do that, I downloaded the PS2 mouse interface for Arduino from the Arduino website. There's a full tutorial there showing you how to hook up the PS2 connection to an Arduino. Downloading and flashing the Arduino board with the program allows you to see the changes that are made on the PS2 scroll wheel, as you can see here, just by clicking on the serial monitor. After that, I took the numbers that came from the PS2 scroll wheel, and I turned them into values that could instruct the actuators to move on the robotic arm. I started by connecting a simple motor controller, this can kit motor controller, and I controlled some small motors. Eventually, I moved to a larger setup that you can see here and installed Polulu motor controllers. Because I used high amperage 12 volt power systems, I'd like to put a little note out there about safety. When connecting power straight from the wall to these units, it's always good to have a little barrier between your fingers and the outlet connections. Here you can see the setup from the actuator, which is connected by a cable to the Palulu motor controller, and in turn was also connected to the Arduino. Palulu motor controllers receive their power directly from the 12 volt power source. Using controls from the Arduino, it can then send instructions to the actuator motors, Another point of safety is to note that the Palulu motor controllers get very hot. They get hot enough to burn you long before they actually burn out, so it's important to install heat sinks. I also installed a little fan on top of the heat sink to make sure that the heat dissipated effectively. When the motor controllers are cool, they run much better. Lots of connections needed to be added to the Arduino Mega Proto Shield, as you can see here, in order that all of the motor controllers could be connected. It can get really confusing when working with so many wires, and so I like to print out labels that let me know what each of the wires mean and what they're connected to. Putting sticker labels on the end of the wires make it really easy to troubleshoot if problems come up later on. Next, I installed all of the motor controllers and the main Arduino controller with the power sources onto a plate plywood. 
After installing the robotic arm, it was easy to run the wires through the roof of the container and to the controls on the top. Here you can see me testing the controller. When I move around the PS2 scroll wheel, the different lights indicate motion on the motor controller. And here you can see the studio test of me moving back and forth an actuator using the scroll wheel. After conducting other studio tests, making sure that the actuators could move the robotic components easily, it was easy to multiply the controls into the full robotic structure. Here you can see the robotic controls moving back and forth, with me in the background using the scroll wheel. Of course, for every one thing that I show in this video series, I did 50 things in the background that would simply take too much time to illustrate in these short video series. A complex and interdisciplinary robotics including mechanics, electronics, structural, usability, and interaction design elements were all incorporated together. If you have any detailed questions, feel free to leave a comment or contact me via my website. Next up in this video series, I'm going to talk about the most important component, the haptic feedback device, and the art exhibition where the robotic arm was shown for the first time. Thanks for watching, stay tuned and I hope you enjoyed this video.